नमस्कार आई एम योगेंद्र देवा योर होस्ट फॉर गवान अकेडमी ओपन हाउस एंड टुडे वी आर बैक अगेन विद अनदर एडिशन ऑफ द ओपन हाउस सो दिस इज एडिशन फाइव वी हैव ऑलरेडी हैव फोर ओपन हाउसेस अर्लियर ऑन ऑन डिफरेंट टॉपिक द टॉपिक्स आवर रेजिस्टेंट्स दे गिव अस द टॉपिक्स एंड वी चूज द टॉपिक्स and uh, try to do justice to it so today's topic as we all know it is uh, uh, hydro tunneling versus metro tunneling a geotechnical perspective and uh, we are very happy to have an expert uh, who will be speaking on this topic he has had uh, i think tremendous experience uh, both in hydro tunneling and metro tunneling and both of these are uh, very interesting topics so i personally look forward to hearing him and uh, dr thavan will be uh, giving the formal you know introduction of our uh, speaker who is none other than mr bina kumar mishra he is uh, head uh, geotech at uh, uh, lnt construction mumbai working for the mumbai metro the topic is very relevant to the sector development these days in the country there are lots of tunnels going on lots of road tunnels particularly road tunnels and metro tunnels and railway tunnels these yeah. one metro is always on it has already already been there but uh, these uh, infrastructure projects are in a big swing himalayas is uh, himalayas are being uh, i mean driven through tbms and dvm along all these multiple tunnels so i will not uh, come in between you and the speaker but before i hand you over to dr dhavan for an introduction on uh, mr mishra i will just try to tell our participants that uh, we will first have the uh, presentation from the guest speaker and uh, you can start asking your questions right away uh, not uh, not by audio or video means you can post your queries on chat box which we will be compiling and as soon as the presentation is over we shall take up all these uh, all these uh, queries in the chat box one by one and if you want you can come over there and discuss your query with the speaker and afterwards if time permits then we will be uh, uh, opening the house for further discussions on the subject so now i i hand you over to dr dhawan for an introduction on our guest speaker Dr. Dhawan, please. Good afternoon, friends. I hope I am audible to all. Yes, sir. As uh, Mr. Deva has uh, told you, that with growth, with rapid growth of infrastructure in our country. significance of tunneling is improving day by day and that is the relevance of uh, today's speaker i wish to explain a little bit more that why we invited mr mishra today initially all of you know that uh, tunneling technology evolved around hydropower projects and we have uh, done about more than 300 kilometers of tunneling for various hydropower but mostly our projects have faced problems of all kinds sometimes collapses sometimes chimney formations high ingress of water so on and so forth and tbm also could achieve a very limited success for hydro in kishanganga it worked well but at parvati and dulhasti we were not so lucky with it most of these projects are constructed in remote and hilly areas therefore perhaps they lack in backup of investigations adequate investigations i mean on the other hand with the advent of metro new era of urban tunneling has started so there was a very bad news from calcutta metro recently but by and large 
metro tunneling projects are big success in our country. Okay. In my view, metro tunnel projects are relatively more organized. Here, speed of construction or progress is much better, and TBMs are usually a success. So that's the difference. And with this background, we invited Mr. Binay Mishra to tell us the difference as far as geotechnical investigations for various types of tunnels are concerned. The basic idea is to utilize experience of metro tunnels in improving investigation protocol for hydro tunnels. Binay has started his career from NHPC and thereafter he moved, he moved to Reliance Infrastructure, then to Reliance Power, then to SMEC, and now he is working with LNT Constructions as head of geotechnical department at Mumbai Metro. Incidentally, I am very proud to share with you all that he had worked with me also as a young geologist. In my view, he is a very competent geologist and a very potential. He has a lot of potential for future. He is one of the very few geologists who have experience in both types of tunneling projects, hydro as well as metro. At this young age, he has rich experience of working in India, Bhutan and Laos. He was owner's design consultant at Nam Hong Hydro Project in Laos and Nikachu Hydropower Project in Bhutan. I hope all of you will like his presentation on metro tunneling versus hydro tunneling, a geotechnical question. Thank you very much. And over to Mr. Binay Mishra, please. Thank you, sir. I will take a minute to share this presentation. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, if the slide is visible, not yet, Binet. Visible now, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, now it is. Now it is. Please go ahead. Um, go for slideshow before you start. If you, have, if you have any problem, can I? Uh, sir, just it. Can I? Uh, now, it will take a minute, just. Very good afternoon. Hope this slide is visible now, sir. Yes, yes, it is perfect. You start, please. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I am proud to be invited here. Um, 
today's topic we have selected that is metro tunneling versus hydro tunneling a geotechnical perspective the subject was so chosen having three more important reasons one the present day infrastructure development in our country is witnessing a lot so far as totally construction is concerned secondly if we consider the statistics as on date we have only around 2000 meter length of tunneling completed it includes all sort of tunneling be an intra project be a rail project be a road project be the hydro project whatever it may be but the present scope with the government's thrust more on the infrastructure development, we are presently having around 3,500 kilometers of tunneling project in hand. And most of these tunneling projects are prestigious projects, to name a few, like the Rishikesh current project, project, like the bullet train project, like the Chennai Nasri project, and hydro projects, of course, metro projects in most of the important cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, even Bangalore, even tied to cities like Agra and Kanpur, all are coming up. And third, a comparative statement, because as Dhawan Sahib and Dallas have told, this tunneling all started from a hydro projects, and most of our expertise was with hydro projects. We have witnessed tunneling in all sorts of terrain, so far as hydro project is concerned. And metro projects are a bit later entry, and it's getting wider as of now, and we are experiencing some sort of good success, some sort of failure, so far as metro and tunneling is concerned. We will see in the next few minutes the difference between the two, having the geotechnical angle in view. View of this uh, slide, in the left we have the port area of Mumbai, and in the right side it is the pristine Himalayan terrain. Scope for this uh, terrain is tunneling, we have the diverse topography, we have the diverse demogra uh, demography, strata is different, and the scope is altogether different. Though we have to construct a tunnel here in the port or in the Himalayas, but the ancillary factors are tremendously dependent on this main primary objective. My presentation will flow with the fact finding. We will have a comparison of the facts of metro tunneling and hydro tunneling. We will see the pre-construction sequence of activities before start of any tunnel and the channel challenges we used to face, some case examples and how we minimize the uncertainties and what we learn after such discussions. Metro tunneling, the facts to remember, it is always associated with the urban ground and most of the metro projects are in crowded cities now. Though type two cities are also coming up, the underground packages in tower two cities are also in the crowded reaches. And the first and foremost challenge is to keep the ground surface undisturbed and to keep the ground subsidence need or to be avoided as far as possible. The first and the second important aspect with the metro tunneling is the utilities. Whenever we will find the alignment for metro tunneling, the area is previously vested with lot many lines of utilities, be a sewer line, be a electrical line, be a gas pipeline, be a telecom line, whatever it may be, all we are led at the subsoil level and our tunneling has to never set below all these utility lines. So in addition to the geotechnical and rock and overburden parameters, the third aspect what arises here is to map the utilities without letting a single line as unnoticed. The third issue is the rises and the riches, as the tunneling here in metros has to negotiate in big habitation areas. The project should accommodate, accommodate all measures to mitigate any detrimental effects to the existing infrastructure, mainly the buildings, the traffic, without disturbing the urban habitat. And all activities of urban, uh, urban tunneling has to be negotiated with unabated traffic flow. By telling all these things, I must acknowledge that ground subsidence is the key major issue in urban areas. And whenever it occurs, it has a catastrophic effect on project proponent leading to project failure. Let us have some examples of ground subsidence, what we have witnessed in one or two cities of India. Uh, the picture on the left corner is the Chennai Metro project. 
and the right bottom corner is also a Chennai metro project example and top right is the Kolkata metro. As we have already, the picture is self-explanatory, how this ground subsidence proved to be havoc to the project proponents. The facts were hydrotonally includes the complex geology. As we all know, most of our projects, hydro projects were located or are located in Himalayas. And we have the unique challenge of having the geological variations and the geological deviations. Comparative to metro tunneling and hydro tunneling, we do encounter catastrophic geostructures like sewer zones, big sewer zones, sewer seams, large scale faults, some deeply inside nalas, either conditions of stress zones or squeezing, squeezing ground conditions. Yeah. And this surprises in, arises out of this hydro tunneling because of the geodetic structure. All often met with the met with surprises going to the very location. Most of them are inaccessible at the time of investigation, going to the exploratory gaps, whatever was proposed in investigation, most of them could not be conducted, mostly because of the inaccessibility, data insufficiency, deficiency in interpolation, or the most important during execution is lack of in place mitigation support. Access constraint is a big factor so far as hydro tunnel is concerned. Uh, this is the excavation methodology. There is hardly any difference, but the measure is in metro tunnels. We used tunnel boring machines. Most of the metro tunnels are machine driven. And in hydro, there are some examples of machine driven TBM used projects, tunnels, and most of them are drilling blasting. And the design philosophy, either we have used the NATM or of the NMT, Norwegian Metro Tunneling. But in Metro, generally, the drilling blasting tunnels would make the new Austrian tunneling methods, that is the Natum tunnel method. There's the sequence of activity prior to start of the real tunneling work. Here in Metro Tunnels, if you will see, the alignment is fixed not based on the geology, not based on the other aspect, it is, it's based on the traffic need. The alignment as well as the metro stations were prefixed. It was fixed by the urban authorities. It was already fixed by the transport authorities based on the traffic need. What we have to do there, we have to go for a geotopographical survey, alignment survey, and the habitation survey first. And then we have to enter the geotechnical investigation. If you will see, we are missing a big part here, that is the geological mapping. Though we often do geological mapping here, but it cannot be compared to the scale and the satisfaction, the accuracy we have had with hydro tunnels. The third aspect, which is a new entrant here, is the utility survey. This is, there is no utility survey for a hydro tunnel project. The fourth aspect is the building condition survey. Building condition survey do includes in case of the metro tunneling, to identify the area of influence of the tunnel, say, or 50 meter on either side of the tunnel. We have to identify the buildings. We have to go for detailed checking of the buildings, detailed survey of the buildings, categorization of the buildings. Any support measures required before construction has to be there because one aspect we kept in mind of the geotechnical guy here is that once the tunneling project started, the project proponent has to own whatever, whatever the damages or destruction happened to the buildings in the zone of influence. It is the project proponent's responsibility to make the buildings as it is condition. So there used to be an agreement in terms of a building condition survey report that the building in our area of influence is having such type of problem. It is categorized as X, Y or Z and any further subsequent destruction, deterioration, or any problem to the structure will be owed by the project proponents, and it has to be compensated accordingly. Next important aspect is the instrumentation. Though it is there in the hydro tunnels also, but the scale of instrumentation is drastically different. The EBS support here, EBS starts for the existing building structures, the EBS support, will tell what is the EBS support in the building instrumentation on and above the tunnel instrumentation, the ground instrumentation. 
having the check with the hydro tunnels we will see we have to go for a site recce first if it is a hydro tunnel we have to go for the topographical survey we have to go for the detailed geological mapping which happen to be carried out in different phases a preliminary mapping at a larger scale detailed mapping at a very competitive competitive scale and the geotechnical investigations and during the construction we have to go for instrumentation total stability for start of actual tunneling activities what is the challenges in fact uh, we will be uh, emphasizing more on the metro tunnels and we will correlate with the hydro tunnels the first challenge is the machine selection as most of the petro project do utilize construction by tunnel boring machines the machine selection is the almost important activity most important activity in case of a metro tunnel second one is though it is not a separate activity it is linked with the machine selection it is the geotechnical investigation the investigation and the machine selection go side by side third one is the pcs building condition survey and existing building support protection utility survey if it is a drilling blasting tunnel the excavation methodology so it is the same drilling blasting but some precautions some contingencies are more here which is not there in case of a hydro tunnel instrumentation it is a massively massive instrumentation in metro projects a separate team of instrumentation engineers are required for your ground monitoring and ground improvement because all these projects are time bound projects whatever the geological or geotechnical literature we had heard we have to propose mitigation measure, measures before hand because the tunnel project cannot withstand any delay in time at least this is the classification of tunnels uh, tbm tunnel boring machines we know uh, tbms are meant for either hard rock tunnel or for soft ground conditions generally there are four type of tbms one is the raw hard rock tbm one is the earth pressure ballast epb tbm the slurry tbm or the other one is a mix of the epb and the slurry seal tbm that is the variable density tbm in hydro projects we have the experience of using rock tbms because we had had a stable phase or if it is not exactly stable or uh, it is a near stable condition it is unlike the metro condition where we have to negotiate mostly soil or loose ground conditions uh it can be a open tbm the rock tbm is a open tbm or if it is sealed it can be single seal or it can be a double seal for soft ground conditions we have the earth pressure balance these are competent machines which you to negotiate the soft strata the ground inflow conditions water inflow conditions and the slurry uh, tbm which again capable to negotiate like the play set up thing and a mix of the these the variable density tbm which can negotiate sand seal or clay strata also for any tbm tunneling before onset of the tbm actual tbm we have to excavate two shafts one is the launching shaft and one is the retrieval the launching shaft is to be the machine assembly chamber and from there at the tunnel grade the machine has to progress at once so we will see this is the launching shaft and this is the scope of the tunneling beneath these buildings and whatever it may be and this is the retrieval area before and these two shafts are to be excavated the machine has to be lost here it has to be assembled at the tunnel grade then the actual tunneling goes on cut and excavation goes on and once the work is completed we have to retrieve from the retrieval shaft and dismantle it for transportation to somewhere else having a comparison between the both metro and hydro tunnels the first used to be the geological mapping in case of the metro tunnel most of the area is covered by soil or habitated occupied by the dotted presence of buildings and commercial commercial structures so no rock outcrop is exposed only we have to rely on borehole investigations from this 
what happened we don't have to see the rock mass as a whole before start of the tunneling activity and what our geophysical investigation we used to do here generally we do in mass scale also but the problem is that the results are less reliable because they are open interfere with the subsurface utilities say we are having a electrical survey on the road along the alignment of the metro project but the cable lines the power cable lines used to be a few meter ahead of this line so the investigation purpose of the geophysical investigation purpose many of the times gets disturbed but in virgin lines virgin areas they proved to be very successful rock mass condition in metro tunnels before start of tunneling hardly it is possible we used to do the rock mass condition only during the actual excavation schematic classification of rock mass is done based on the borol investigation data that were done for the tunnel design purpose and in case of a hydro tunnel we have the rock outcrops which are thoroughly mapped at different stages stages and at different scales before having the tunnel design form up so geophysical investigations proved to be very successful their results when correlated with the borol data are more useful and the rock mass condition rock mass classes are identified and finalized during the design stage itself based on the mapping data of the exposed rock outcrop next is the drilling activities here most of the boreholes are located on along the roads as measured of the projects are more or less along the roads therefore it is possible to drill the boreholes as planned earlier as per the planning the execution is not a difficult and the length and the depth of the boreholes are not as deep as the hydro project size you are hardly 30 to 35 meter deep hole will do because the tunnels are mostly around 20 to 26 meter below the surface a 1 or 2 meter below the tunnel bed is sufficient when we compare this drilling activities with the hydro tunnels most of the planned borehole locations are found to be in inaccessible or areas where investigation is not possible not feasible at all so most of the tunneling areas are remain as unexplored and were left to be negotiated during the actual stage of construction of the tunnels are planned at deeper depth below hill and therefore boreholes to be drilled at the top of the hill and the depth borehole depth ranges from hundreds of meters therefore it takes a lot of time to complete a single borehole so this is the easiness of doing a drill hole in metro tunnel area and the difficulty one high in the hydro tunnel area the third aspect is the ebs mapping and the building condition survey and based on this ebs mapping and the building condition survey one has to go for the structural audit of the buildings and the heritage structures these two activities hardly require in any hydro tunnel area what happen in all the existing buildings not only building they are utilities wells monuments heritage structures or within the zone of influence are to be mapped categorically mapped and the detailed mapping used to give a certain category to each of these structures based on their category they are categorized from negligible slight moderate severe and very severe the severe and very severe buildings are lot of concern you to take to major attention during the construction activities hence this severe and very severe buildings we are subjected to structural audit before start of the tunnel any such sensitive structures such as the heritage building say for example a city like mumbai all along the tunnel is dotted with heritage buildings and some of the buildings are 300 year old and the tunnel has to go just 25 26 meter below this now and the tunnel it can be either a machine driven tunnel or a drilling blasting tunnel we are experiencing this problem of the building owners how it has to manage how their building has to be maintained because all are severe condition all are heritage buildings there is no scope to alter their buildings at all 
because the heritage committee is strict, very strict in this aspect. So this BCS forms a major part of the geotechnical investigation activities or subsequent monitoring activities for a geotechnical engineer in metro tunnel projects. This is how we used to do the building condition survey. We have identified all buildings in the zone of influence. It is generally a 50, 50 meter left of either side of the tunnel alignment. And all buildings, all floors, all corridors, all locales of the buildings were mapped in detail. All existing defects were identified. The defects here mean existing cracks, spalling portions, reinforcement corroded portions, seepage areas, if any structure is tilted or not, all these areas have to be identified. Based on these defects, a certain damage category is assigned and buildings categorized as severe or very severe. We are subjected to structural audit, non-destructive tests were taken place to check the severity and if needed, repair and pre-construction propping were done so as to make keep the buildings as it is conditioned so that further deterioration due to the tunneling activity will not be there. This shows how we used to do the propping activity. This is a building say, in the Mumbai metro area, the port area. These are the ISMB sections. These are provided as the temporary support or the propping to keep this building intact so that the tunnel or the station excavation, which is going just immediately below this, if it is clearly visible here, the station is just at the foot of this building and one part of the tunnel will never say below this building. So all these temporary supports were there to keep the building intact so that any minor development of crack or any further escalation of the existing crack would not be there. Whatever is uh, reported, whatever is detected, there should be any, there should be an agreement with the building owner. The building owner has to sign before start of the activities. Once the BCS is not complete, no construction activity could be taken up in the area of question. With the protection of the severe or old buildings, support to be provided in advance, and extra propping metal to be stacked at site. In addition to this, emergency response team has to be formed because the team has the responsibility to coordinate with other part of the geotechnical activities. Because in metro, what is happened? We have the geologists, we have the instrumentation engineers, we have the geophysicists, and we have the geotech guys, the civil execution persons. All are all intercorrelated, and emergency response teams are formed to take care of not only the tunnels, but the buildings also. So the response team has to coordinate with the geologist, with the instrumentation engineer, 24 into 7, in order to address any exigencies arises in the buildings overhead. In hydro tunnels, our alignment is being planned below hills, impact on buildings due to tunneling is less, protection requirement is not there. Next is the ground vibration. As, uh, we know the area of bridges and people very accessible to uh, legal tremor. We have to maintain all stipulated parameters. If it is a ground vibration, a noise or pollution, whatever it may be. For a geotechnical engineer, the first, uh, the one aspect is the ground vibration. The vibration arises because of the machine drive also when the TBM is driven, but it is under control. But if it is a drilling and blasting tunnel, if it is a natural tunnel, we have to go for drilling and blasting. Keeping the vibration within the permissible limit is a task, big task. Vibrations also cause damage to the buildings. It causes discomfort to the vents, and in most of the cases, they do attract legal cases from the local public. So whether it is a machine driven or a drilling blasting uh, tunnel, vibrations has to be kept within the limit. Such limits were 
generally not prescribed for a hydrotunnel. Or if it is there, a good lysing with local villagers resolve the issue and thus rarely attract any good cases. Apart from the buildings, most of the metro alignment has to negotiate with the holy wells or bore wells. Bore wells in general, in most part of the city, holy wells, if you think some communities, say for this Parsi community in Mumbai, they have their holy wells within their home and they don't allow any loss of water quantity or any change in water quality owing to the activity of metro proponents. So this leads to any metro activity if it leads to release of drought on surface or road with high traffic or to any well, bore well or a holy well, it is a difficult assignment for the project activity. Such wells in an eternal grid hardly uh, there is any existence of any tunnel uh, wells in tunnel in an hydro tunnel. The next is the groundwater improve. Water enters into the tunnel led to the settlement in buildings. And as you see, the buildings are just overhead and the tunnel is going below all of them. The water ingress to be arrested to avoid any damage to the existing road or the building. In case of metro tunnel, majority of the tunnel alignment plant below hills, thus any damage to the building on top is rare. And therefore, enough time is there to block any eventual groundwater flow. The vibration limits for metro tunnel in sensible areas where the buildings are severe or very severe or heritage buildings are there, the Director General of Mine Safety prescribes the ground vibration, the peak practical velocity as 5 millimeter per second. If it is not accepted by the locals, the court ordering come subsequently, say in case of Mumbai, even this 5 millimeter per second vibration is not allowed and we are supposed to allow follow 2.54 millimeter per second as the maximum peak particle velocity arising out of any sort of activity, be the tunnel driving machine uh, tunneling, be the drilling dusting tunneling, but the vibration at the nearest building should not exceed 2.54 millimeter per second. And each blast, each activity to be monitored at each of the building building localities. Every building has to be monitored with respect to vibration throughout the activity. And this minimal presence of buildings in hydro tunnels and having a comfortable range of uh, PPB there never stands as a bottleneck or area of concern for the hydro tunnel problem. At the vibration limit is there, we have to monitor either 5 or in some cases it's a 2.54 millimeter per second PPV, then the blasting becomes cumbersome in metro tunnel. But in some locations, we have to go for drilling blasting. Though it is not all along the tunnel route, the metro route, but some persons say 200, 250 meter, 300 meter length of the tunnel has to be done by drilling blasting, either some of them have to be platform tunnels of a bigger dia, 11 meter or so. So due to this less allowable vibration limits, small blasts are taken with less MCD, that is the maximum charge per delay, less number of holes, and not allowing full phase blast at one go. But for hydro tunnel, what happened, we used to take full phase blast and power blasting a two to three meter of advance is possible. In case of a metro tunnel, one of the practical experience we are having here in Mumbai, to have an advance of one meter, we have to go at least 25 to 30 number of blasts. And the number of holes per blast is hardly five, six, seven, or eight, because just above this tunnel where we have the buildings, and we have to limit the ground vibration as 2.54 millimeter per second. To oblige this vibration limit, the blasting has to be designed accordingly and to, having, to have a frame up of blasting activities here, we have to take at least hundreds of number of trial blasts so as to frame a blasting pattern and then progress after that. Weight of explosives used in each blast 
for a metro tunnel hardly 2 kg 2.5 kg maximum 5 to 7 kg but it is around hundreds of kg if it is hydro tunnel all these activities will pay when we will consider the productivity and project completion in addition to this lowering the mcd having less number of blast holes having n number of blasts per 1 meter of advance we have to go for pre blast activities also this is just in order to keep our vibration limits within the permissible limit the pre blast activities include line drilling that is the periphery drilling we do double line of periphery drilling so that it will provide a, an annular space between the ground above and the tunnel face below and some areas we have to go for pre phase creation by mechanical means though this line drilling is done in hydro tunnels this is just to do to have a smoother profile nothing to do with the vibration limit next is the vibration monitoring vibration monitoring in metro tunnel to be carried out during each blast for all the nearby buildings and for that matter separate real time real time means a 24/7 uh a monitoring mechanism of vibration sensors a separate real time as well as manual monitoring to be kept in place in all buildings in different floors so to have one blast a team of instrumentation engineers are to be placed before taking a blast at each building corners and at each building locus it is on and above what we have done in a real time monitoring also but for hydro tunnel one or two sensors generally used to be placed at strategic locations say some monuments or some degraded buildings like that all this is to pay in the productivity due to low explosive less holes per blast less number of holes thus the productivity is reduced due to increased time cycle in a metro tunnel and the productivity is usually high as full phase blast can be accommodated in a hydro tunnel next is the instrumentation proposal both the tunnels generally witness instrumentation but in case of a metro tunnel the instrumentation is extensively provisioned three sorts of instrumentation are there in case of a metro tunnel one is the structural monitoring that is the tunnel itself to monitor the convergence of the tunnel second is the ground monitoring because on and above the tunnel either a building or a road is there so the ground has to be monitored and any dislocation any settlement any disturbance to the ground above will have a, will have an effect to the project construction and the third instrumentation is the building instrumentation all buildings are to be instrumented they have to be instrumented manually they have to be instrumented mechanically all vibrations are to be recorded manually vibrations are to be recorded with real time sensors also so the instrumentation proposal in hydro tunnel is only from the tunnel to monitor the tunnel deformation only and the ground behind the excavated tunnel this is the installation of instrumentation or the provision next is the monitoring of instruments once the instruments are installed they have to be monitored at their certain frequency generally twice a day monitoring is to be there in metro tunnel as long as the instruments are within the allowable limit when they breach the limit the frequency has to be increased at up to hourly level also but in hydro tunnel our instruments are monitored on a daily basis and the allowable limit the permissible limit for each instrument for a metro tunnel say for a inclinator in metro tunnel a target in metro tunnel the allowable limit the triple limit we call it the allot action and the allot limit allot is the maximum permissible limit and allot is the 50% of the maximum limit and action is the 80% of the maximum limit all these limits are very sensitively played say at most will be having the room for 40 mm of deformation or settlement but in most of the cases it is 10 to 
millimeter of settlement or deformation is allowed. For such limits, in case of the hydrotunnel, is 100 mm, 200 mm. Given the limits are wider, the play is there, the project proponent can do their activity freely. But once the term limits are there, 10 mm, and once the limit breached, it creates a grave situation for the project proponents to take care of the existing EBS, to take care of the existing structure, rather than to proceed with the project activities. Some building instrumentation, ground instrumentation, and tunnel instrumentation is there. These are the optical targets in buildings, in tunnels, everywhere. Building settlement markers, crack meter, all cracks in each level of each building are to be monitored in the area of influence. This is the TFX extensometer in the arches, in the tunnels, tilt plates for the tilting of the structural element of buildings, inclinometers to measure the tunnel or the ground above the tunnel. The next sort of instrumentation is the real time monitoring. The real time monitoring is a 24 into 7 monitoring. Here, the sensors are placed at the monitoring locations. They were connected to the data loggers, and from the data loggers, they are connected with the internet and the data, any deformation, whatever it may be. Sorry. Way, yes, sir. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are running slightly late. There are number of queries for you. Okay, sir. I mean, running, running, in, running in tens. So, if you can uh, conclude in five minutes. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. This is the real time monitoring. Alert action and alarm level, how these levels are there. And we, have, we know the alignment cannot be altered. These are basically traffic need basis. So we have to do all sort of ground equipment, all sort of monitoring rather than alignment to be shifted. This is a case study of Mumbai Metro. This is the Arabian Sea and the tunnel is passing some 15 to 20 meter off the coast of Arabian Sea. This is the point where Kosa entered in the 9 by 11 case. And my team it did a marvelous job here. They encountered the precise to flow condition in this location. So before the TBM arises, uh, arrive here, they do TAM grouting. TAM grouting, they are the tube MNC grouting. It is a combination of the compensation plus the permeation grouting. They do multi layer of TAM grouting with multiple phases of clay, sorry, betonite, cement, cement, silicate, having n number of alternatives, all number of local uh, permutations and combinations. They grouted the locations to mitigate the precise flow condition and the tunnel passes successfully just 15 meters of the Arabian Sea coast. This is the area. Some history of the TBMs. We had a bad experience in Dulasti, that is the Robin Gripper. Kishanagaga, we have a very successful history. The Bishnugat, People Koti, Tapovan, and we have very successful history in all metro stations, metro walls, be it Delhi Metro, be it Chennai Metro, or be it the Mumbai Metro Art Project. A comparison, I am comparing two success stories of Metro Tunnel and Hydro Tunnel. I am proud to take Kishanagaga as the name because this is one project at DPR stage, I was also involved in this project. We had the experience, I got the data from somewhere else, it's not my own data, that 300 meter per month progress was there. But the similar progress is there in Metro Tunnel in Mumbai Metro also. But the difference is that we used a double cell TBM, cell TBM in Kishanganga. And here we are using a single cell TBM in Mumbai Metro. So in a double cell, what happened? The mining and signal building are independent and run simultaneously. But in single cell TBM, all activities are dependent. So this 300 meter per month, if you will compare with a single TBM, single cell TBM will come something around 500 or 600 meter per month. And the risk, high risk is involved in the metro tunnel. The severity of any failure is more in metro tunnel, whereas risk of failure, that is the probability is more in case of a hydro tunnel. So what we learn, we have to approach, uh, adopt the concept of I more. I means it is an investigation or an ownership. Ownership means the owner of the project component should have a contractually binding geotechnical data. It should be a contractual obligation. The owner should apply, uh, take the risk, should be contractually firm on the data 
whatever he is giving to the contractor. The GBR, the geotechnical baseline report, should your line, should your mark the adequate risk sharing mechanism, that is, what is the owner's accepted risk and what is the scope of surprises to be clearly spelled. And the third is the involvement of the international experts. We used to do take the message from manufacturers abroad, but it is not the case. The international experts or the manufacturer team should be there as long as the project construction is there. Next is the I is the instrumentation. We have to go for real time monitoring and the EBS monitoring and rampart instrumentation program. Ground improvement measures, wherever we see the gray area is there, adequate mechanism should be there, adequate team should be there to go for ground improvement. It can be any cost, but not at the cost of waiting a machine to wait to negotiate it for indefinite time. Element of safety for the people, property, and existing infra to be there in case of urban tunnel, environment, noise, vibration, and pollution, public utilities are a factor of concern. EBS, we already discussed the heritage, sensitive, and age old structures having the PPV, 5 mm per second or 2.5 mm per second has to be attained. This is a Herculean task, I tell you, having a drilling dusty tunnel just 20 meters below a building which is 300 meter old and limiting the vibration peak particle velocity as 2.5 mm per second. Conclude, we can tell that, that the challenges on hydro tunneling are also paramount in nature and have been drawing the attention of geofraternity since a predictable time, since a predictable time. And most of us are involved with hydro tunneling, either start of our career or throughout the career. And this is the time when the metro tunneling now deserves a big pie attention of this geofraternity and to revolutionize this metro tunneling because we have the task of bullet train, RRTS, Chenan industry, and all sort of under uh, water tunnels, say like uh, the proposal of under sea tunnels in Brahmas Putra and the part of the bullet train. So it has to be revolutionized and now need attention of all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vishadi. Thank you, sir. Happy lecture. And uh, you were sir. simply fluent. You just kept on speaking. There were a lot to absorb. And uh, I have, we have never been busier, I mean, uh, compiling, compiling the queries. There have been so many of them that in the end, I think 10 or 15 or more, which we could not compile. There was no time for that. It takes time. Okay, so now, actually, we are we have got just eight minutes before we close our program. So I will just share the queries with you. So whatever queries you can uh, accommodate in these eight minutes, we will do it. And rest of it, we will send you the queries. You can give us the reply, and we will pass yes, it sir. on to the participants. Yes, okay? Yes, will that do? Yes, will that be okay? Yes, sir. That's okay. So, so thank you. I, I will. I am just trying to share it. Is it there? Um, yes, sir. Are the queries there? Yes, sir. It's the. I have told you that the man is the man. 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 The I think uh, Vinay, you have answered it. Okay, sir. Uh, in, yes. If uh, the next query is if heritage buildings came, how you stabilized if any movement encountered during tunneling? Uh, I tell you, all buildings were monitored. And before the building go for a havoc stage of uh, settlement, or deformation, it used to give pre signals well in advance. So monitoring the signals beforehand, monitoring the signals from the instrumentation is of uh, big concern rather than addressing the problem next. Once we get uh, came to know that the alert parameter has been exceeded, it can be stabilized with extra propping. It can be gone for repairing also. It can be gone for repairing also. Or any sort of uh, ground improvement measures. Because if it is going for any settlement, 
a ground settlement or arresting the ground settlement will stabilize the building also. So it is the instrumentation and the action taken side by side rather than the mechanism because ultimately if the building collapses then it has to be rebuilt or repaired. Before reaching that condition, one has to go for the instrumentation and provide temporary supports and time to time action, what is going wrong, where the ground is getting settled, how it is to be arrested, that is the view. How to close borewell in metro project, it's removed or filled by This is just making if the old well is identified beforehand and success of getting the uh, cement in 28, then just to make a grouting layer uh, beforehand or any sort of uh, uh, pure grouts uh, within our own activity areas so that no seepage or no cement will go there. That will do. I think I have not negotiated such condition. Tell with the IS code of vibration limit. Sorry, I don't know, sir. We have followed the DJMS guideline. What is the mixed design of time drought? It's a big job. It cannot be discussed here. I will uh, reply mail. Next set of queries is by Mr. Anurudh Bhattacharya. You uh, can, uh, I mean, whatever you can answer quickly, you can do it. Rest you can leave. We will uh, tackle them later. Sir, just on Nirut Bhattacharya. Sir, it is not visible. Hello? Any problem? Uh, I am looking up. Uh, hey, the... Look up the name. Name is, name is below. You should start with this. How to tackle organic clay deposit How intersecting. Yes, okay. yes. How to this tackle is... organic clay deposit intersecting the metro tunnel alignment. The thing is when one needs to know that there is a organic clay, if it, is, if it is known in the investigation stage, then one has to select it, his machine beforehand accordingly. Because a hard rock TBM cannot do well in the organic clay deposit. It has to be predicted well in advance and the machine to be selected accordingly. The drill hole data in metro tunneling are fixed or flexible as per the requirement. Do we follow any code, code or metro investigation? Yes, the standard metro drilling in or drifting investigation codes are there and we are following the same, same pattern of drilling, same pattern of data compilation, nothing new. In metro tunneling, how the underground water bodies tackle? I gave one example of uh, pressurized flow condition that has been tackled by time grafting. It all depends how big is the water body and what is the condition. Grout improvement, grouting, this is the only solution. As per your experience, what is the best shallow investigation technique as on debt? Drilling, GPR or all sort of geophysical can be supplementary. What are the investigation geotechnical design planning required for underwater TBM totally? <coughs> Similar, I don't find anything uh, different. It's, uh, normal to the TBM condition, one has to see what at tunnel grade, what is to be negotiated. Metro tunnel for rock characterization, what are the parameters we require? I tell you, for rock characterization, we don't have any rock mass characterization beforehand. Whatever the rock mass is there, we encounter during the excavation only. So, uh, it is a contingency matter. That's why we may follow NATM, not NMT in metro tunnel. That is the instrumentation based tunnel support, not the rock mass based tunnel support. So I think uh, Mr. we will uh, now close the session here. Okay, I will sir. just uh, I will just uh, go through. I mean, there's a whole list of queries okay, still sir. left by Mr. Chaube, by Arindam Chakravarti, by Ravi Kumar, by Rahul Sharma. The number sir. of queries. So what I will do is we will yes, pass sir. on these queries to you. 
and uh, sure. you just uh, give the reply and uh, we will give it uh, by mail to the, the, the this payment. So sure. thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I mean, it was lovely having you here for this talk today. And uh, we will be returning next time for our uh, open house edition six. I think most probably that will be on TBM tunneling. Okay. On the on the geological aspects, geotechnical aspects of TBM tunneling. So I mean, uh, it will be announced after a couple of weeks or something like that. And uh, before we take leave from our participants today, I think uh, I will request Dr. Dhawan if he wants to say a final parting words. Well, thank you, Devasa. Thank you very much for very nicely conducting, first of all. And thanks, Binay. It was a very informative presentation. It was on the desired lines as we wanted. You have really done very hard work uh, for, uh, for uh, meticulously comparing uh, various items which are required. And you know, your presentation is very clear. If somebody reads it, so he gets a glimpse that oh, what are the differences and where we can learn from uh, you know, instrumentation of uh, metro tunneling, investigation methods of metro tunneling, and particularly for improving our uh, hydro tunneling. Uh, and uh, uh, you see, because I work more for hydro tunneling, so it is my wish that one day we investigate uh, to the level of requirements of TBM so that our TBMs are not stuck. Uh, so I will be brief here. And uh, maybe that uh, some more uh, improvement in your presentation is required. As an elder, this is my humble suggestion or request. Uh, you have a lot of potential, and I'm sure you will uh, come up with much better presentation in future. Uh, uh, before we close, and before I hand it over to Mr. Deva, I would uh, love to uh, convey my thanks to so many veterans who have come here today, namely Mr. Uh, Rajbal Singh Saab, Mr. Uh, V.K. Sharma Saab, uh, our uh, ex-colleague from uh, Geological Survey of India. Uh, Mr. R.N. Mishra Saab, who was former CMD uh, SJVN. M Mr. Lomas, who was uh, my predecessor in MECL. He was CMD of Mineral Exploration Corporation. And before that, he was as ED with NHPC. Imran Said Saab, who was head of uh, geology a couple of months ago with NHPC. So all these, uh, you know, big people have blessed you, Vinay, today. Thank you, sir. And uh, Thank there you, may be so many, so many others. There may be so many others who, who uh, I, I, I might be missing. So kindly excuse me. I thank each one of you who has uh, come here today and uh, listened to our speaker, Mr. Mishra. And in future, uh, I will request to continuously, uh, continuously, um, Bless us with your presence, please. Thank you very much. Thanks to uh, Mr. Uh, over to Mr. Deva, please. Yeah, I will add that I thought that I saw Dr. Uh, Dr. Sharda, Ishpal Sharda here. Dr. Okay. Pandey also was to come. I could not see his name. Maybe he is also here. So on Dr. Dhawan's behalf, I thank them also to be here. And uh, maybe maybe we have missed a few, so we may be pardoned for that. I think next time. We will check it properly in the list of participants and we will not leave anybody out here. Yes, so, yes, thank yes. You, so thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for coming over. Thank you, Binay, for a uh, for lovely lecture. And uh, we will we, we see you soon regarding some, some other topic then. Okay? okay. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you very much for coming and do join us in our next open house, edition six yes. on TV and tunneling. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Jai Hind.